a lot of techniques are there that we that you can utilize so we will talk about uh, model compression uh, specifically because all the other techniques include um, hardware and it depends on uh, what hardware you are using so we will focus on model compression only so model compression is a set of uh, techniques that are used to reduce the size and complexity of model uh, without significantly impacting their performance as we discussed earlier quantize the activation as well, uh, which is basically output values of the model uh, models layer during in, uh, inference. So this ensures um, consistency in the precession of both uh, weights and activations. Assalamu alaikum everyone. So uh, throughout the course, uh, we have been talking about uh, LLMs and learning about LLMs. What are they? How to fine tune them? How to customize them? How to build them from scratch? So today we are going to talk about some issues that we uh, might face uh, while uh, working with LLMs uh, of any kind, especially open source LLMs. So one of them is memory management, and it is a very uh, important and um, a very crucial issue that uh, we have to mitigate. Uh, so here is the doc. Um, here is the outline of the presentation. So let's start with the introduction. So consider you have a computer and you want to use an intelligent program like LLM. Uh, let's say ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is uh, very remarkable at um, conversations, but has a significant appetite for memory. So it needs ample of uh, space to uh, operate effectively. So this is where memory management uh, comes from. So um, uh, think of it as organizing your room uh, efficiently to fit all your belongings. So memory measurement in LLMs uh, is essential because uh, these models are equipped with millions or even billions of parameters and they can quickly gobble up memory resources. So this uh, the catch here is that our de devices, uh, whether it's computers or servers, have limited uh, uh, amount of memory capacity. So uh, memory management is all about ensuring that uh, LLMs like ChatGPT can run smoothly without uh, causing uh, memory congestions. Uh, it's not just a matter of uh, convenience. It's about optimizing efficiency, speed, cost effectiveness, or even sustainability uh, as well. So when memory is managed effectively, these intelligent models can operate uh, operate uh, at rapid and real time responses, whether you're using it um, on your phone or in the cloud. So it's like getting all the powers of uh, AI without overwhelming uh, your device memory. So these are some uh, there are a number of challenges associated with memory management in LLMs. Uh, these include uh, the size of the model. So LLMs have billions or even trillions of parameters, and uh, this means that they require a lot of memory to share, like to store the model uh, weights and activations. Uh, and another is dynamic nature of the model. So LLMs are trained on massive data sets of text and code. So this means that the models are consistently uh, changing as they are exposed to new data. So this can make it uh, difficult to manage the memory uh, usage of the model. Uh, and another is the need for a real time performance. So in many cases, it is important for LLMs to be able to generate text or translate languages in real time. So this puts additional constraints on uh, memory management. Uh, next, we are going to talk about some techniques um, that are uh, useful in uh, basically uh, efficient uh, memory utilization. So number one technique is model compression. So model compression is a technique when uh, can be used to reduce the size of model without uh, significantly uh, impacting on their performance. So this can uh, basically uh, free up memory and uh, make the models more efficient to deploy and use. Then we have model uh, optimization. Uh, model optimization technique can be used to improve the way that LLMs uh, use memory. So this can involve techniques such as caching, garbage collection, and memory sharing. Another is distributed uh, training. Uh, so uh, distributed training can be used to train LLMs on multiple machines. So this can be uh, helped, helpful to reduce the model requirement for each individual machine. Then we have uh, hardware acceleration. Uh, hardware acceleration techniques can be used to uh, speed up the computation of uh, LLMs. So this can help to reduce the amount of memory that is needed to uh, store the model uh, weights and activation. Let's talk about model compression because model compression is the one technique that is uh, used by everyone uh, when uh, who are working with LLMs and it is the most uh, convenient form and a lot of research have been uh, done in model uh, compression and a lot of techniques are there that we, that you can utilize. So we will talk about uh, model compression uh, specifically because all the other techniques include um, hardware and it depends on uh, what hardware you are using. So we will focus on model compression only. So model compression is a set of of uh, techniques that are used to reduce the size and complexity of model uh, 
without significantly impacting their performance as we discussed earlier. So it's very important for deploying uh, uh, LLM specifically on resource contained devices such as mobile phones or embedded systems or even if you are using uh, an LLM uh, on your laptop or uh, sometimes on a limited uh, uh, like GPU. Uh, so uh, these realistic, realistic har hardwares uh, become uh, like it's a very big issue um, when working with LLMs that you cannot deploy them on your own laptop. So uh, there are a number of uh, different model compression techniques uh, including uh, uh, pruning. Uh, so it is basically a technique where it uh, where, uh, where a subset of the models uh, parameters of a model are removed. So this can be done by removing the least important parameters or by removing the parameters that are uh, least correlated uh, with the other uh, with the output of the model. Then we have uh, 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 quantization. Quantization is a technique where the weights and activation of a model are represented using fewer uh, bits. So this can be done by rounding the weights and activation to a, a lower precision. Then we have a knowledge distillation. A knowledge distillation is a technique where a smaller number is trained on um, basically a smaller model is trained uh, to mimic the prediction of a larger model. Uh, then we have low rank factorization. So low rank factorization is a technique where the weights of a uh, model are factorized into a lower rank matrix. So this can be done by using a variety of techniques such as singular value um, decomposition, which is uh, SVD. Uh, so uh, low rank uh, adoption is a subset of parameter efficient fine tuning, and we will be discussing these four uh, techniques in total in this lecture. Uh, not in this lecture, uh, but we will be discussing uh, pruning and uh, model quantization in this lecture, and then we have a, a two specific de like dedicated lecture for uh, parameter efficient fine tuning and logic uh, knowledge distillation as well. So uh, the best uh, model compression technique uh, for a particular application will depend on the specific requirement of the application. So you have to uh, think about your requirement and then use a specific technique. So here are some uh, benefits of uh, model uh, model compression. So uh, reduced uh, basically model compression reduce uh, size and complexity of the model. So model compression can significantly reduce the size and complexity of a, a model. This can make it even easier to uh, deploy the model on resource constrained devices uh, and it includes our laptops as well because uh, normal devices for LLMs are very big servers and uh, very heavy hardware. Uh, then increase speed and efficiency. The model uh, compression can also uh, improve the speed of and efficiency of a machine learning model. So this is uh, because uh, the smaller model requires less computation to uh, run. And uh, in the previous lectures, we have also talked about uh, how uh, smaller uh, models can uh, basically uh, run uh, very fast and uh, provide uh, a good latency. And then improved accuracy. So model compression can also sometimes improve uh, uh, accuracy of a machine learning model. So this is uh, because the smaller models is uh, is focused on is more focused on uh, the important features of the data. So it basically fits your requirements. And then talking about some challenges. Uh, there is uh, sometimes loss of uh, accuracy as well. Uh, it can lead to uh, loss of accuracy because um, the smaller model may not be able to capture all the important features of the data. So if you are uh, dealing with a very complex use case or uh, you are dealing with uh, some complex uh, data as well, so you can uh, you might face a loss of accuracy as well with model compression. Uh, then increased complexity. Uh, complexity. So some model uh, compression techniques can be complex to implement, so this can make it difficult to uh, use these techniques for large scale uh, machine learning applications because uh, these uh, techniques are not. Uh, it basically adds up uh, to the implementation of the LLM as well. So if you are uh, building an LLM and then you are uh, on top of it, you are basically uh, efficiently building it. So if you if a, an um, if a beginner uh, is learning about LLM, so uh, it's become difficult for that beginner to basically learn uh, those optimization techniques and uh, efficient learning techniques and then learn about uh, what LLM um, are uh, like how to deploy LLM. Then we have lack of uh, standardization. So there is no single standard for model compression. This uh, can make it even more uh, it make it even more difficult to compare different model compression techniques and to choose the best technique for a particular application. 
So overall, model compression is a promising technique for reducing size and complexity of the LLMs uh, without significantly impacting on the perform performance. Uh, however, there are some challenges that need to be addressed before uh, we compress any model, and we have to see uh, basically according to our use case. We will be discussing about uh, 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 perning and uh, quantization. So these two techniques are used in LLMs uh, to reduce the model size and computational requirement uh, while maintaining the performance. So here is how they differ from each other. Uh, so perning uh, uh, involves uh, removing certain connection like weights or neurons units uh, from an uh, from a neural network. So LLMs uh, we have talked about LLMs and transformers, so they are also RNNs as well. So the goal is to identify and remove less important parameters effectively, uh, simplifying the network's architecture. And it is also typically done uh, based on uh, criteria like weight magnitude. So smaller or less uh, influence on weights are. Uh, basically punned and uh, leaving a sparse uh, network behind. Uh, and also uh, uh, when you are doing like punning to the models, uh, it becomes like uh, fever uh, in parameters and require less memory, making them more effic uh, memory efficient as well. And it can lead to um, smaller model size and reduce computational requirements as well, uh, but may require uh, like retraining uh, to uh, recover some performance. Then we have quantization. So quantization, on the other hand, uh, focuses on uh, reducing the precision of uh, numerical uh, values, weights, and activation in the model. So it involves uh, representing uh, values with fewer bits. So for example, instead of uh, using 32-bit floating uh, point numbers, you might use 16-bit uh, uh, fixed uh, point numbers. So quantization uh, aims to maintain the model uh, structure and architecture, but will reduce uh, memory and computational uh, requirement. So uh, the model, uh, quantized model have smaller memory footprints, uh, making them more memory efficient. And quantization can be applied to pre-trained models uh, without extensive uh, retraining, making it a quick approach uh, to model optimization as well. So uh, in essence, uh, printing trims the uh, neural network by eliminating less important connection or neurons, uh, while uh, quantize, uh, quantization reduce the precession of uh, numerical um, values to save uh, memory without uh, fundamentally altering the network's uh, structure. So both techniques are used to make LLM and uh, other uh, uh, models more memory efficient and faster to execute while uh, striving to maintain their performance. Uh, talking about model quantization, um, so quantization uh, uh, for the first step in quantization is basically choose an appropriate uh, quantization scheme. So common a uh, common option include basically post training or quantization, uh, quantization aware training. So post training quantization applies uh, quantization um, uh, after model training. So while uh, quantization aware training incorporates quanti uh, quantization into uh, training processes. Uh, so uh, the quantization process is uh, divided into basically uh, three steps. Uh, first is more weight uh, quantization. So convert the model weights, which is parameters, to lower precession data types, such as 16-bit or 8-bit uh, uh, fixed uh, uh, point numbers. So this involves mapping the original uh, floating point values to uh, to be uh, the chosen uh, precession, whatever you have chosen uh, for your implementation. Then model, uh, then activation or uh, quantization. So similarly quantize the activation as well, uh, which is basically output values of the model uh, models layer during in, uh, inference. So this ensures um, consistency in the precession of both uh, weights and activations. Then in the last is uh, dynamic uh, range determination. So identify the dynamic range, minimum and maximum values of weights and activations. So this information is uh, crucial for accurate quantization as well. Um, so the and also we have um, uh, uh, like implemented a lot of quantized uh, model as well. Uh, at first we were facing very uh, uh, difficulties in um, implementing models like uh, Lama, uh, Falcon, MPT, Vincia, uh, Visuna, Orca. So it uh, basically uh, needs a lot of uh, space and a lot of uh, memory uh, to basically run them. Uh, so we cannot, uh, we were we were not able to run them on 12 uh, uh, GB of GPUs or even uh, 16 GB of GPUs, and they have uh, like they are small models like 3 billion 7 billion model so even though they were small they we could not uh, like we were we were not able to uh, basically uh, uh, use them uh, with the uh, like uh, good 
latency. Uh, so then we uh, discovered a quantized version of the model. So uh, uh, big uh, models like we have talked about it, like Llama, Falcon, MPT, Visuna, Orca, they, uh, the all five of them have a specific quantized version of them. So uh, the quantized version of them uh, where uh, you are applying quantization um, uh, before in the training phase. So they have uh, retrained the model uh, uh, considering the fact of uh, quantization and then they have made them public. So it is very useful uh, if you are uh, if you want to work with them. And if you are uh, talking about post uh, training quantization, uh, uh, you can basically use these uh, steps uh, when you are basically uh, loading a model. So uh, first you uh, you will be needing bits and bytes. This library basically uh, makes you um, able to uh, basically compress your models in. Uh, for example, if you have 32 bit uh, a model, so you can basically compress it uh, to run on your uh, computer on your laptop uh, in 4 bit or 8 bit precision. And uh, you can basically add this line, this parameter, which is load in four bit is uh, equal to true uh, in your uh, when you are loading the model. So it will uh, you will be able to uh, basically load a very big model um, into um, a, a very uh, like a, a resource constraint uh, device as well, which is a laptop or a normal uh, collab uh, free version as well. So we would be uh, like we was able to uh, load Orca three billion and Orca seven billion, Falcon seven billion, MPT. 7 7 billion uh, the quantized version of it and also uh, when you are not uh, like when you don't have the quantized version you can uh, try to load it uh, after training uh, method as well uh, so these were um, uh, how like the two model compression methods and uh, next in the next lecture we will be discussing about parameter efficient fine tuning and also knowledge distillation uh, uh, in llms as well thank you so much